This video describes how to use the Cooper Surgical Esophageal Balloon Catheter. While the information in this video is believed to be accurate, it does not represent an official recommendation from Hamilton Medical, nor may it substitute an opinion, assessment, or instructions provided by a trained healthcare professional. Step 1. Before you start. Unpack the catheter and connect the three-way stopcock directly to it. Inflate the balloon with three milliliters. Test for leaks. Check the balloon's integrity and tightness by applying gentle pressure to the balloon with your fingers. Deflate the balloon again after checking it. Estimate the length of catheter to be inserted by measuring the distance from the xiphoid across the tip of the earlobe to the tip of the nose. Check the ventilator display and make sure the esophageal pressure waveform shows a pressure of zero plus or minus 0.5 centimeters of water to avoid a technical misreading. Connect the ventilator connection line to the esophageal pressure or auxiliary pressure port of the ventilator. Step two, inserting the catheter. Apply lubricant to the tip of the catheter if needed and place the patient in a semi-recumbent position to make placement easier and more accurate. Carefully insert the catheter either transnasally or transorally to a depth of about 50 to 60 centimeters so the balloon is positioned inside the stomach. If you feel resistance, stop and then turn the catheter slightly to continue. Step three, inflating the balloon. Actively deflate the balloon with the syringe to ensure it's completely empty of air. To equalize the system to the ambient pressure, remove the syringe and then open the stopcock to both ventilator and balloon. Keep it open during inflation. At this point, inflate the balloon and then remove enough so that one milliliter remains. Close the stopcock to the syringe. Step four, positioning the catheter. Gently withdraw the catheter until cardiac oscillations appear on the esophageal pressure waveform. A significant variance in the baseline pressure means the balloon has moved from abdomen to chest. Step five, validating the measurement. Perform a dynamic occlusion test during an expiratory hold maneuver. Gently squeeze or compress the chest and compare the positive deflections of airway and esophageal pressure as you do so. If the catheter is positioned correctly, the esophageal and airway pressure waveforms will display similar changes. Ideally, the ratio for changes in esophageal pressure to changes in airway pressure should be one to one. However, deviations of up to 20% are acceptable. This equals a range of 0.8 to 1.2. The transpulmonary pressure waveform should show no significant deflection during the occlusion test. In this case, the change in esophageal pressure is 8.4 and 8.9 in airway pressure. This means a deviation of 0.94, which is within the acceptable range. Step six, securing the catheter. 
Secure the catheter to the patient's nose with medical tape. Deflate the balloon, then carefully remove the guide wire and the Y piece. Reconnect the three-way stopcock and inflate the balloon. Then remove enough so that one milliliter remains. Then close the stopcock to the syringe. As an advanced approach, consider titrating the optimal balloon filling volume. For more information, please refer to our esophageal balloon catheter reference card. You can find the link in the description of this video.